Hey, everybody, we're super excited to be talking about the latest features that we're pumped about with Teams. So today we're going to be covering new Teams features like polls, OneDrive integrations, SharePoint integrations, automatic groupings, and tags. First, let's talk about polls. So previously we would use Forms, so Microsoft Forms um, inside of Teams meetings to allow for that collaborative feature where you can send a question and get people's responses. It was also really big when we were trying out the webinar feature that they had as well, if you remember that feature. Mm -hmm. um, so this is actually an app that you can install onto Teams now called Polls, and it works much better and it's very fluid. So I'm gonna share with you guys and show you a little bit of how that works. Okay. All right, so when you're inside a Microsoft Teams meeting like this, how you add a poll is you're going to go to the chat button at the top of your screen. When you click on that, you can click the three dots in the bottom right hand corner, and that will pull up this messaging extensions button. When you click on that, you search for polls. Basically, it's just adding the app into this chat. OK, and so then what you can do here is add the question. So I'm going to say, how does my hair look today? Popping. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Poppin's going to be the first one. Poppin's going to be the first one. 50 year olds trying his best at Gen Z slang. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say average. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to say, ain't it sis. Yeah, okay. Just like that. Okay. So you've got some options, right? You could say they can choose multiple things, record names of respondents. So it's, it'll be only visible to you or you can share the result with the respondents at the end. So you check those if you'd want to see what exactly everybody said, or you could also check the last one if you want to share the final response, which I'm sure you, you'll normally want to do. But once you're done with all of these settings, you'll click preview and it's going to show to all of your team. So here's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna pop up like this. Bobby, do you see that on your side yeah. as well? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So then you're going to have them select. So I'm gonna say that it looks kind of average today. Didn't really put a lot of effort into it. If I do say so myself, it lets you uh, kind of test it yeah. first. So I just sent it. Now I just sent it. So okay. So now, now can I vote? you can vote. I can also vote. And I thought, hey, why not? So now it shows that everybody responded. So we've got a 50 50 on that it's popping or that it's average. <laughs> and it also shows your response. Now, it, it shows to me that there is two responses, but it doesn't show what everybody did because I didn't check that top box. But if I did, it would show what Bobby's response was as well as mine. So, so Kaylee, is there a way to be able to tell if it's going to record your names so that people can see how you're voting, you know, <laughs> if you're trying to avoid controversy? Wonderful question. So yes, there is a way to do that. When you look here at the poll itself, before you answer, you can see where it says poll and then it says not record name and results are going to be shared at the end. Uh -huh. So it's like right at the top underneath <laughs> where, it, where it says it's created. But if you see this poll that I'm on right now, this one says that it's going to record the name and the results are shared at the end. But this one says not record name and gotcha. results shared at the end. So you can check real quick at the top there before you really say something that you wish you didn't in front of your <laughs> boss in a meeting, because that would be embarrassing. But this is a really great tool for meetings to make sure that people are still a part of the meeting and it's way easier to use than the previous version was with forms. All right, Kaylee, so what's next on the list? So next we're gonna talk about automatic groupings and tags. Okay. So I'm going to move us over to the team section of Microsoft Teams because that's where these really shine. Okay. So these two features are going to keep your team super efficient. I love them and I have been using them every single day now. So 
automatic groupings. What are these? These are groupings, um, or should I say apps or tags of people that Microsoft Teams has created automatically for you. So for example, when you create a team, you have people who are the owners of that team and you have people who are guests of that team. So it has actually automatically grouped those people for you. So if you would like to tag those people in a message, all you'd have to do is click the add sign and then click owners and it will automatically group the team owners together in a what? chat just to notify all of them at the same time. Love this, super easy. Something that also is really cool. And this is a little bit of a shout out to a video we're gonna be doing in the future. Shout out to the Teams app called Shifts um, that we have started using. It actually pulls your shift groups that you have too. So we have a group called Directors and here it takes the directors who are on shift right now, might I add. Oh my gosh, I thought that was so cool. That's um, dynamic. That's really yes, cool. Yes, yeah. And so that is the automatic ones that Microsoft Teams does for you, but then you can create your own tags. And so what I've done is inside our Axiom team, when you click to manage the team, there is a tab at the top called tags. When you click on that, you can see the different tags that you have created. So these tags over here, the directors and the managers, see how it says current shift ends at 530. Those are mm -hmm. showing that they're coming from the shifts app. So I didn't put those in. But these leadership and engineers tags, I actually created myself by clicking this button at the top right that says create tag. Then when you create the tag, you can name it. And then you can add a description to it of what exactly that means. Then you add the people that you would mm -hmm. like it to notify every time it is tagged. So I find this super helpful because if I ever want to contact all of the engineers at once, all I have to do is this. Then I would just go to the conversation and type at engineers. And then I would select it and it would notify all of them at one time rather than trying to remember who all to tag. So that is a really helpful feature, super easy to use, super easy to integrate and is very efficient for your team. Mm -hmm. So now that we talked about automatic groupings and tags, Bobby, I know that you really love the OneDrive integration. So show us a little bit about that. So the big reason I like this is if I swap machines or I'm setting up a new computer, I don't like finding the SharePoint libraries that I have. And we've now integrated our SharePoint libraries into Teams. And Teams has got this beautiful little shortcut that you can use when you've done that so that you can add those libraries into your OneDrive. We may say, well, why is that important? Well, what's nice is those shortcuts always exist in your OneDrive, taking you quickly to those SharePoint libraries. When you do that, all of your favorite libraries that are nested underneath your OneDrive are still there and you can quickly access your favorites. So let's get into that and show you how that works. Okay, so as you can see, I've clicked on Teams and now I've come down here underneath our team that Kaylee's made under marketing. Now, if you're not sure what these padlocks are, we do have a video, right, Kaylee, I believe? Yes, we do. Okay, we do have a video where we talk about how you can do private Teams, mm -hmm. uh, which also has some beautiful benefits of allowing you to control the security of who can access the documents that are associated with that. Yes. So I've clicked on marketing here. And now what it does is when I click on files, I see the folders that are associated with this, this marketing. Now, Kaylee, in your video, I believe, don't you talk about how you did this linking with SharePoint and Teams, correct? Um, correct. Yes. Yeah. In, in okay. the video, and I'll link this above, it will break down how you can do the SharePoint integration inside of Microsoft Teams. Yeah, this is fire. That's the, the best work for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it. This has allowed us to be able to just become that one single source for us is Teams. Mm -hmm. So if we want to access information, we come here first. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I'm talking about is this add shortcut to OneDrive. Now you can do the Beautiful. sync button here. And if you do that, what it's going to do is just sync this marketing library. Again, this is a library inside SharePoint that we've nested underneath our team. Mm -hmm. And all that's going to do is create a separate folder, which I'll show you in a second. But if I click this add shortcut to OneDrive, it nests a shortcut underneath your OneDrive. And now it's always there. So any 
systems that you have, and this is the big difference here too, any systems that you have your OneDrive added to will now see that shortcut. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas if I click the sync icon, I'm going to have to go to each respective device and continually click that sync so that they'll also get it. Right. Whereas if I just add it underneath my OneDrive, wherever my OneDrive is, now that's where that library is available, which is a beautiful thing. Beautiful. So let's show you how this looks. Sorry for the uh, witness protection blurring that we have here. I just, we have a lot of folders <laughs> and I really wanted to make sure that I was showing you something that was real. Mm -hmm. um, here's my OneDrive that I have for Axiom. And here's that marketing. And notice that little weird icon that mm -hmm. has kind of like two brackets with a line in the middle. This indicates that it is a link to a SharePoint library. So you know right away that's what's going on by the, mm -hmm. the difference of how it looks. Because normally it just has, um, you know, under this marketing folder that we have here, it just is a folder. Right. So you know that's just in your OneDrive and there's nothing seriously special about that. But when I click on this, it now takes me mm -hmm. to this folder here mm -hmm. and uh, I'm looking at the same thing that I was looking at here. Beautiful. So as you can see here, um, this information is the same. <laughs> <laughs> it is the same. It is the same. Now, what uh, if you just wanted to link one of those folders? So that's a good question, Kaylee. There's two ways you could really do it. You could open the folder like I have here and just hit the link. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be super cool, uh, you just <laughs> highlight it kind of. I don't click anything. I'm just mousing over it and you see this icon show up, mm -hmm. boom, then it would just link just Breeze to Bobby. Very now, nice. keep in mind, you can't double nest. You can't double sync. So if you've already had this root folder synced for marketing, and then you decide you want to sync just it again to, to Barista, it, you'll freak OneDrive out. It'll go into tailspin, th suck its <laughs> thumb and hate its life. So don't do that. So just keep it a one-to-one -one ratio. If you want something underneath here, then don't sync the marketing folder. You'll have to do those individually. It can get very upset. For those of you that run in this situation before, when you have that little red X near your OneDrive, that means things aren't syncing or not working correctly and bad things can happen because as you're making changes, people don't get it. Right. So pay attention to the red X and make sure everything's flowing and syncing correctly. Don't nest syncing. In other words, syncing things underneath themselves that will cause conflicts. And mm -hmm. that's just a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that feature. Now, the last thing that we wanted to go over was something, Bobby, that you have loved using since we have integrated SharePoint documents inside of our Microsoft Teams, and that is the search feature. So tell them a little bit about that and your thoughts on it. Uh, so what I'd like to do is kind of show you what I'm talking about, some doing some basic searches, which was kind of surprising to us is once we nested our SharePoint libraries underneath Teams and we use Teams as search, it not only would find the documents with that content, but also content inside the documents. So if I said cars, it's going to show me any document that's got the word cars on it as far as in the name of the document, mm -hmm. but as well as any document that's got the word cars in it, that which we weren't really kind of expecting it. And it's pretty fast at how it does it. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, when I do the search for marketing, it's going to do, if I have it by default, it's going to say all, and then it's going to show me chat messages, things like that, files. Mm -hmm. But if you click here on files, what it's going to do is now it's going to limit it to files that have either marketing in the name or contain marketing inside the content of that right now you may say hey look i want to limit this to a team's channel um sadly you can't do a specific channel inside of teams but you can limit it to a team mm -hmm. that you're doing stuff for so i could do like axiom team mm -hmm. and it'll it'll look for this whole axiom team and all the channels underneath it right um but you can't just limit it to only um one channel, which would right. be super cool. Now, if some of you have a way of doing that or know some kind of switch, uh, hey, drop it in chat. Yeah, I, uh, I love being educated by people that are watching our videos because that's how the world turns, right? Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. This is a really great feature. And if you guys see this feature and think to yourself, wow, my team could use this, make sure to go back to the video that we were talking about earlier. And I'll link that in the description below where I talk about how you can integrate SharePoint and OneDrive inside of Microsoft Teams to make this happen. Yeah, there's just so many things that you can do. So just keep staying tuned to our channels as we're coming out with different content mm -hmm. about things that are really important for us that are making a difference in the efficiency and performance of our team. But also we love the comments mm -hmm. uh, from you guys about what 
you might like to see. And we can dive into that possibly as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you want to be notified anytime we upload a new video. But we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.